Good afternoon, guys. It's working, bringing you a quick update on Bitcoin. Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. Uh, we're looking at Bitcoin to the U.S. dollar, starting off with the four-hour chart on Coinbase. And last time we spoke, guys, Bitcoin had just Bitcoin had just broken out of uh, 10,400. This area right here, guys. I told you that 10,400 uh, was a relevant zone, guys. I did expect us to get a little more acknowledgement at 10,400 uh, on the way up. Instead, what happened? We uh, broke up through 10,000, went all the way up to about 11,200, uh, and then we got uh, a, a nice pivot there, small correction, right down to about uh, 10,400. And what what should have been resistance at 10,4 started acting as support, which which was a very, very, very bullish sign. The fact that we had 10-4 uh, dancing on top of this and then created a series of, if we zoom in here, and I apologize for not getting in a, a, a video out earlier, guys, but it's been the weekend and uh, anyway. Um, yeah, but it, this this was this was your sign that we were very likely going to take one more kick up here. The fact that we were getting a series of higher lows throughout this uh, this little move here, and then of course we just came up and took out this prior high at 11.2, and we've now created another high of about 11, almost 11.3, of early 11,000, uh, about 11,085 or 11,285. Um, so, question is, where are we heading now? Um, it does look to me like this thing is starting to get some exhaustion here. That being said, could we come up here and test 11,500, especially given the fact that we just created another high? It's certainly possible. Um, of course, the, you guys know that this was the area that I would be I was looking at somewhere between the current price point on my last video, which was around 10.5, and this area between at about um, 11,500 to 11,700. This is the area that I was expecting um, a larger correction to come here. Now, does that mean that has to happen? No, not at all. But and until we take out the top of this zone, which is at about 11.7, I am going to be looking for a larger correction here. So I don't know that now is the best time to start getting into Bitcoin. Again, not financial advice. You do whatever you want to do. Um, I'm just saying we are starting to look extended here, guys. There's no question about it. One of the things that's getting my, uh, getting my eye, let me zoom in here. Hang on one sec. There we go. Looking at shorts here. Shorts, a little bit of an uptick, but one of the things that's really getting my eye here is longs. Longs just started stacking out of the blue here, and I think we stacked about, what, 10%? Let's see. Right about, yeah, 11%. Uh, yeah, we stacked 11% inside of about uh, 10 hours or so. So that does suggest to me, this is all just FOMO. And this is the kind of thing, once you start seeing stuff like this, as price is rising, you just see longs just start to shoot up out of nowhere there. That's when you know that you're starting to see that FOMO to take over and you're starting to get guppies back in the market. You're starting to get people back into the market that are not analyzing, they're not traders, they're, they're people that are just FOMOing into this thing. And that's when you know that, that, that very likely, it may not happen right now, but very likely when you start to see this kind of things that you, this is the thing that market, things that market makers look for. This is the kind of things that will eventually get liquidated and destroyed. We saw it all throughout 2018. I don't expect it to be that bad at all, but a lot of people have learned their lessons and if they haven't personally, they know someone that has. So, but the fact remains that this, this was a sign of guppies in the market here. The fact that longs just started stacking out of nowhere as price started going up. Pulling out on the weekly chart, guys, again, I know I've pointed this out before, but for the benefit of those that may not have seen it, and just to remind those that have, this area between 11.5 and 11.7, this was an extremely relevant zone, basically all from uh, January of 2018 all the way through March of 2018. We can see that it was a massive area of resistance all throughout that zone. In other words, and we can see that we wicked up in here many, many times and then were rejected. In other words, this is a, this is a very strong supply zone. There's very likely a lot of sell orders sitting up here, um, and I I would expect this to act as a decent area of resistance on the way up. Um, but not only do we can we visually see that as an area of resistance, obviously, but we've got two other things that we're watching. We've got the fact that we have yet to have a 20 or a 35 to 45% correction, which is very, very common for any kind of a parabolic move like we've seen here. We've not we've not yet had that since we started going up here in uh, well actually since uh, December of 2018. We had this first little uptick, a little bit of a pullback, and then this things just started going parabolic all away from uh, February. But just looking at this um, correction, even from this little uptick here, we only corrected about, let's see, 20% was it? Yeah, right at 20% there. The next uh, major, quote unquote, major correction we had was right here. And I believe it corrected about 21%. Uh, actually, that was only 18%. Yeah, I mean, almost nothing. Um, so, and then we did have one other correction. I believe if I had to zoom back into the daily to find it. Yeah, right here. We had that... Uh, I believe this one was like a 21% correction. 
yeah, we had a 21% correction right here. But my point is, we have yet to see that 35 to 45% correction to where we really get a lot of people panicking in the market. Um, and I do think that we need to see that. And this is why I was saying, I think there's a good chance we see that somewhere between 10.4 and 11.5. Now, 11.5, obviously, guys, for the reasons I just pointed out, is a very, very relevant zone to expect a at least a pause in price, at least, the, at least for price to acknowledge that zone on the way back up. But uh, not only um, do we have uh, this this prior um, area of resistance back here in uh, January of 2018, January through March, but as I pointed out before, guys, if we just take this entire structure, and I know I've done this every time for my last few videos, but I can't do it enough, guys, because I do believe, um, you know, for those of you that haven't seen it, I do believe this is important for you to see. It's a uh, um, extremely, extremely um, relevant zone. We've got, the, if we just go swing high to swing low of the entire structure, we can see that the 50 fib level lies right over there. The, th uh, the 382 was acknowledged on the way back up, and we can see that the next area of resistance, if we do get above this 50 is going to be with between the 618 and the 65 which also coincides almost perfectly with this area of support right here back in December of 2017 all the way until we broke down in January of 2017 and that so that golden pocket between the 618 and the 65 that lies right between that area so in other words my point is these fibs are lining up perfectly with our visual areas of support and resistance anytime you see something like that you want to take notice you want to know that if you're looking for scalps if you're looking for a good entry exit point these are the things that are going to point that out for you um, now does it is could price just shoot through this like it shot through 10,000 Yes, it absolutely could. This is cryptocurrency, guys. The only thing consistent about cryptocurrency is it consistently surprises. So yes, could we all get surprised here? Absolutely, there's no question about it. But probably until that does happen, probability says we will at the very least get some kind of a rejection off here. And I would say at least a maybe a maybe a 15, 25% correction. But again, I'm still looking for that 35 to 45% correction. Doesn't mean it has to happen, but it just means that every time we've had Bitcoin going parabolic like this, going all the way basically all the way from the beginning of time, it has been followed at some point by that 25 to 30, or 35 to 45% correction. And typically it doesn't take this long. So in other words, we are long overdue. All right, popping over, checking CMEs very, very quickly, guys. Obviously, CMEs are not traded on the weekend here, but we still have, and this is still relevant, even though we've come up all the way up above 11,000, we still have this gap down here between 7.2 and uh, um 74.50. We have this gap between 85 and 88.70 here, and of course, by the um, you know 99% probability, by the time CMEs do open up, we are going to have very, very likely we are going to have another gap. Obviously, um, given the fact that we just closed, what did they close at? Uh, uh, yeah, right at 10,000. Was it 10,050? 10, 10,015? Sorry. I'm staring right at 10,015. So obviously we're going to have a decent gap opening up here, guys. So what does that tell you? Even though we have yet to have these gap fill, gaps filled, that's all. That's just emphasizing the point that we have not had that larger correction. And you know, again, probability says that we are going to come down here and at some point fill these gaps. Are we going to come all the way down to 7,200? You know. <laughs> It's this anybody's guess. It's anybody's guess. I I, I, I wouldn't I don't want to call this probable. I certainly don't want to call this probable. And we and even though I can say every gap in history of CMEs has been filled, we don't have much of a history on CMEs. So that's kind of a kind of a kind of a moot point. Um, but the point but the point remains that these gaps very, very likely, at least this gap here at eighty five hundred, very likely this gap here um, at ten thousand from depending on where it opens up tomorrow will very likely get filled. Does it have to happen? No, but it's certainly something to keep an eye on, guys, especially given the fact that we have yet to have that larger correction. So assuming we do have a larger 35 to 45% correction, what would that look like? In other words, from our top out, where would be a 35 to 45% correction? How low would we go for that? Well, if I assume that Bitcoin is going to come up here, possibly test even, even let's call it 11.5. It's going to have one more kick up here and test 11.5, which it looks like that's a real possibility right now. Let's see what happens here. Let's see what a 35 to 45% correction would look like from a top at about 11.5. That would bring us down to, let's just split the difference. 35, 45, let's call it a 40% correction. A 40% correction would bring us almost exactly down to fill that gap between uh, down to about 7,200. I mean, almost to the tick. A 40% correction would bring us down to about $7,000, assuming we have one more kick up here and we get to about 11.5 11, um, 11, there. Now, of course, I'm just spitballing here, guys. Does you know? Does that mean that has to happen? Of course not. Of course not. But 
it's, it's very interesting to show that, you know, in history, 35 to 45% correction is about average for any kind of a parabolic move like this, and that average would bring us down to about that $7,000 range, which would fill all CME gaps. So, you know, is that a coincidence? Might be. It absolutely might be. Am I stretching? Am I looking for things here? Yeah, yeah, I probably am. There, I mean, nothing says that has to happen, but it's very interesting. All right, checking our moving averages, exponential moving averages, Bollinger Bands. We're stretching out the Bollinger Bands on the daily chart here, guys, to just uh, just stretching them out. Obviously, um, this is a very, very bullish sign of strength. We're well above the eight-period EMA here um, on the uh, on the daily. Uh, we're seeing a, a the gap widen between the 21 exponential and the 55 exponential, as well as the eight exponential and the 21 exponential. Nothing but bullish there, guys. Um, yeah, there's just no other way to look at this. This is extremely, extremely bullish. Let's go ahead and check the weekly. Stretching out the upper Bollinger Bands there on the weekly looks like it's going to close there, guys. Again, nothing but bullish there, guys. This is just this is just nothing but strength. Uh, the yeah the uh, eight eight week exponential stretching out the twenty one, stretching out the fifty five, widening the gap between the fifty five and the twenty one. That is uh, yeah, this is just bullish as hell. All right, checking our indicator, zooming back in on the four hour chart, we can see the four hour MACD. It is showing, looking like it wants to show a little bit of bearish divergence. We're not there yet, guys. Obviously, we have not topped out here, but it uh, does look like it is suggesting it may show a little bit of bearish divergence here, especially if we have one more kick up, followed by a hard rejection, guys. That would, um, that would... Um, confirm that bearish divergence here guys and again at that point i think we'd very likely be coming back down and testing at least uh 10.5 if not this 10.4 range um, i'm going to be watching very closely if we do break down below 10,400 i think it's going to be a very quick drop down to about uh, at least 9,000 probably at least 9,950 uh, probably more like 9,800 ish and i'll have to reevaluate um at that point if and when we do get there to the upside guys again um, watching this area between 11.5 and 11.7. If we do take out 11.7 decisively, by decisively, I'm looking at a four-hour candle, both opening and closing above 11.7. At that point, I do think it very likely... Oh, get rid of that. At that point, I do think it'd be a very quick rise to probably... Let's check it out. Uh, probably... Yeah, at least 13. Yeah, very likely. Let me, let me actually come out here to the weekly. Yeah, 13, 13, 5, I think would be a very logical, maybe 12, actually, maybe 12, 8. Let me take that back. Yeah, maybe 12, 8. Um, I, I do think if we have an open at four-hour open and close above 11,700, I do think a very quick $1,000 move up to about 12,800 would be likely. A major, major resistance sits at about 13, 8, 13, 5 to 13, 8. But I do think that uh, 12,800 would be, um, uh, would very likely uh, give us a little bit of resistance on the way back up there. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but again, that is that is a very, very big if. Like I said, we got a lot of work to do before we get above 11,700. All right, back into the four hour. Four hour RSI, uh, certainly overbought. Also suggesting some bearish divergence. Again, we're not there yet, but it is showing that, showing a little bit of leg, like I like to say, suggesting that we that may uh, we may end up seeing that. Let's go ahead and zoom out to the daily. Uh, daily overbought on the RSI without question, obviously. Uh, signal line, MACD line, completely erect. Um, not looking like it's reversing course at all. Histogram still heading straight up. Uh, decent, uh, yeah, I mean, that is showing, definitely showing some strength. Let's go ahead and pull out to the weekly. Uh, let's see, weekly, uh, suggesting a little bit of bearish divergence there, guys. Again, we have not topped out yet, so it's not there yet, but it is suggesting a little bit of bearish divergence. Again, just suggesting that we may be topping out here, guys. Doesn't mean that we have to be, just suggesting that we are seeing some signs of that. So let's wait and see how it plays out. Let's go ahead and, uh, while we're here, let's check the monthly. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and... and hit bitstamp for this because we got a little more history on the monthly with bitstamp uh fresh cross above the signal line and macd line uh, fresh cross of the histogram into bullish territory on the monthly that is extremely extremely bullish looking at the monthly uh rsi monthly rsi uh not quite uh yeah not in not overbought yet so again nothing but strength there guys we could see we could see a nice pull back here in the short term guys and that would not affect the monthly the overall monthly just looks beautiful all right, so how am I going to play this guy? Zooming all the way in on the four-hour chart, how am I playing this guy? Very, very conservatively. Am I going to scalp this back and forth? Possibly. As I said, if we do break down below, a decisive break below 10,400 uh, 10, by decisive mean a four-hour open and close, very likely short down to about 9.9. Uh, to the upside, if we do take out 11.7 um, decisively, four-hour open and close, very likely long position up to about 12.8. In the meantime, guys, it does look like, in fact, let me check something here. It does look like we are seeing so a lot of structure in this market. 
uh, if I pull our fib extension off of here, see if we're uh, getting anything constructive. And yeah, actually we are. Um, so yeah, we are seeing a lot of um, a lot of uh, um, structure in this market. We just rejected right off the 382, almost a double top here. I mean, like I said, this came up about $50 higher here, but $50 in this market is not much of anything. That's not even 1%. Um, so yeah, we we did uh, almost a double top here on the four hour, very small time frame. nothing confirmed yet. This thing could continue up very easily to 11.5. Um, and I do think if it does take out this high, which was literally almost to the dollar at 382, we were at uh, $11,291. If we do take that high out, I do think it'll very likely be a quick, rise up to very likely the 50. The 50 fib sits at about 11,500. Um, I'd watch a little front run on that about 11,400-ish, somewhere thereabouts. Am I going to play that? I just don't think the risk to reward is there, guys. So personally, not. Um, personally, I'm going to be very, very conservative until we get a more, uh, I mean, don't get greedy here, guys. You very, If you've been in Bitcoin here, you very likely have done very well in the last few weeks. Do not get greedy. At some point, we're going to get a larger correction. And at some point, you're going to have a very nice entry and um, um, a, a much more opportunity for some profit here. So don't try to squeeze the last drop out and then just nullify all the profits that you've made. This is the time to increase your stop losses, maybe even take some profit. None of this is financial advice at all, guys. So you do what you want to do. I'm just kind of telling you what I'm doing. Um, so you've got my targets. You've got the points I'm looking at. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things there. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, would appreciate an upvote if you have enjoyed this content. Till next time, guys, please trade safe. Take care of yourselves. This is working.